How's it going, guys? You doing well? You made it through the tsunami, the downpour outside. How many people you really debated on whether to come or not? I'll be honest. It's fine. It's fine. All right. That's, you were the one I was praying for then this morning. But we are so excited that you are here with us. And if this is your first time, I just want to personally just welcome you. I know sometimes looking for a church can be kind of intimidating and, and it, it can be a difficult task. And so I just want to welcome you and also honor you. So if everyone can just put your hands together for our first time guests. And I really just want to encourage you to stick around, check us out. And, and as they said earlier, next month we'll do our DNA class again. I encourage you to jump in in that and you can learn more about us. So we're uh, in this series called Pursuit, and basically what it's about, it actually goes along with our series that we're, our, our Daniel fast that we're in, 21 days where we set aside the first part of the year to intentionally seek God, maybe to connect with him more, like you want to draw in a little bit closer with God. Maybe you found yourself a little bit distant in your relationship with him, and you want to draw in a little bit more. Maybe it's for clarity and direction. Maybe there's some big decisions in front of you, and you're not sure what decision to make, what is right or what is wrong, and you need some clarity brought into your life. And for some of you, maybe it's, to be honest, maybe it's you need breakthrough. You need something to change in your life. And there's something about fasting. There's something about intentionally humbling yourself before God that invites him into the situation. It's you stepping out and asking him to step in and let him fight your battles for you. And so I don't know what's going on in your life, but I would encourage you, join in. So we just finished our first week, and it's never too late. Just jump in. Like Wes said on the announcement video a little, little bit ago, you can check out last week's YouTube, and you can learn a little bit more about fasting. We did a whole series on it, so I just really encourage you to jump in on that. Today's message is it's a, it's a simple one. I don't have any kind of brilliant content for you today, not like I always do, <laughs> but I'm not saying that there's anything special today. I just, I just want to give you a simple message in, because I hope that it helps you to walk in everything that God has given you that I really want to see everyone in here lay a hold of everything that God has for you in 2019. And I genuinely believe that 2019 can be your best year if it's your best spiritual year. I think you have an opportunity to position yourself with God, and you'll hear something here in a moment. I'm going to give you this phrase. There's this one phrase I want to give you, and I hope and I pray that it burns on your heart. And it'll be a phrase, I'm telling you, it's going to challenge you. It'll challenge you to go deeper. It'll challenge you to surrender a little bit more. It'll challenge you in many ways, but ultimately to have a greater encounter and experience with God. How many people say, I would like to have some of that? Amen? And so last week, if you remember, we spoke or I spoke about growing in favor with God. And I just want to touch on that for a moment because I think it's very important. Now, I want to be very clear about something. God's love for you, it's, it's, you, you have all of him. Like you have all of God. He's, he loves you. The, he will never love you more than he loves you right now. But favor you can grow in. And we pointed out a couple scriptures where there's different people, including Jesus, who grew in favor with God. And so I want to give you, I want to revisit that because I think it's important. And I would, I would encourage you to write these things down. If you want to grow in favor with God, I, I encourage you to write these things down and learn from this. The first thing, there's two ways. And the first one is stewardship. So stewardship, there's, there's three things I think that you and I are called to steward well. And I believe that if you steward these things well, you will continue to grow in favor with the Lord. And the first one is finances. If what God has given you, how well are you handling that? Is there any reason for him to give you any more? Like how well are you stewarding your finances? The second thing is time. How well are you stewarding your time in your life? You can see in scripture where it talks about seizing every opportunity. It speaks about how you should number your days, that you shouldn't take days for granted. And the last one is relationships. How well are you stewarding the relationships that God has given to you in your life? 
including even this church. Like, I believe there's a lot of people that God's called you to be a part of this church. How well are you even stewarding that relationship? And, and if you look throughout Scripture, you'll see plenty, plenty of Scriptures that testify to this, that speak towards time, that speaks toward money, that speaks towards relationships. So I think one way that if you want to grow in favor with God is steward what God has given you well. Steward what God has given you well. The second thing is pursuit. Stewardship and pursuit. Now, when it comes to pursuit, there's three things, once again, I believe that you and I are called to pursue, and the first one is his face. Pursuit of his face. And what that means is relationship. Like, are you pursuing him? Are you, are you in fellowship with his spirit? Are you spending time with him? Are you attempting and trying to get to know who he is? Or are you only after what he can give you? Are you after what's in his hand more than you are him? So stewarding a pers- or pursuit of his face. The second thing is the pursuit of his heart. And scripture reveals his heart is for you and I. His heart is for his children to come home. It's for restoration with us. It's for salvation for those who do not know him. How well are you pursuing those things? Is your life on mission? Like, are you seeking the things of God in his kingdom? Are you evangelizing? Are you sharing the gospel? Are you building relationships? Are you expanding the kingdom? And the third thing is his kingdom. Now, when I say kingdom, I'm referring to his administration or the way that he does things, his thoughts, his ways, his processes, his patterns. Are you pursuing those or do you choose to do it your own way? And we can be guilty of this, a lot of us, me included, where we see the scripture says to do something one way, but we think it's easier or better to do it our way. In the long run, we, re- we learned that his way was right. And so are you pursuing his way above your way? And that last one is what I kind of want to focus on today. I, wanna, I really want to kind of lean in onto the topic, the understanding of pursuit. How well are you stewarding pursuit specifically, sp- specifically in the area of his kingdom and his, his patterns and his process for your life? And before I get into that, I want to tell you a story. Is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? All right, guys, don't go to sleep on me. All right, so this is, there was this, this boy, or actually he was a young man who, he loved eagles. He just loved them, and he's never gotten to see one fly. And his desire was that he would actually see an eagle soar. And so he took a special trip to a special area just to see an eagle fly. And so he packed his backpack, and he hiked up through the mountain. He came over to a cliff over this edge, and he was looking, searching, hoping, longing to see an eagle just soaring through the air. And he sees, he sees this bird, and he looks, and it's getting closer, and he's like, it's a hawk. And he's disappointed, wondering if he's going to actually ever see this eagle. He's waiting there, and he's eating his sandwich, and then he looks up, and he sees this magnificent creature, this bald eagle coming his way and his heart gets excited and and he sees it and it's just gliding through the air just soaring in all of its magnificence and what's crazy is that the the stretch of the span of an eagle's wings is about eight to nine feet so this magnificent creature is soaring and and i've heard they're like the the line of the birds no fear no opponent just soaring through the through the sky and all of a sudden he sees it darts down to the ground just shoots straight to the ground. And then he sees it about a few seconds later come right back up, but this time it has a creature, something with it, and it's flying back up to the air. And as he's watching it, all of a sudden he sees it kind of turn and begin to fold. And then all of a sudden he sees it starts to flailing and begins to just flapping its wings and, and, and trying to fly and flapping its wings. It keeps coming, 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 tumbling down. And, and this time it's not a dive to the ground. This time he is falling to the ground and he sees it hit the ground. And so the young guy, he, he goes down to, to where the eagle was and he looks and he sees the eagle and it's dead. It's laying there on the ground and he's just discouraged and he's wondering what, what was that? And he, he turned over the eagle and he looks and he sees this weasel dead with it, and the weasel had dug into its chest and ate its heart in midair. And so here this guy is, he's heartbroken. He's like, man, eagle, you're like the king of all birds. You fly at an altitude. You fly at a place where, where, not, where other birds can't even breathe. All you had to do was drop it. 
That's all you had to do was let go of it. And you let this little puny creature, this critter, this weasel hold on to you and kill you. And all you had to do was drop it. And I think you and I, if we were truly honest with ourselves, we are not so different from that eagle. In the sense that we are holding on to things that is slowly destroying us, that's prohibiting us and keeping us from stepping into the place that God has called you and I to step into. And if you're not careful, hear me. If you're not careful, it's going to destroy you. It's going to destroy you. I want to emphasize that. Hear me. If you don't drop this, whatever this is, and we'll unfold this some more, it's going to kill you. It's going to destroy you. It's going to stop you when you are meant to soar at a place and altitude like no one else, that you are a child of God. You're a son and a daughter of God. And you, we allow puny things of this earth to hold us and keep us when all of a sudden all we have to do is really just let go. Let go of it. But the letting go is so difficult, is it not? So difficult. We're going to look at a passage, this interaction that Jesus had with this young man who was in the same situation where he had, he wanted more of God. Like he wanted everything that, he wanted more of God. But there was one thing that he could not let go of. And so let's dive into this. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 22. It says, and behold, a man came up to him saying, teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And so you can see right now, this guy is coming to Jesus and he's, he knows that something that, that he wants more in his life, that nothing else has satisfied. He wants something else. And you and I, do we not feel that way at times that we get something, we, we, we really want this thing and, and we get it and then we get it only to finally realize that it doesn't really satisfy. And then we're like, okay, we move on to the next thing, whether it's something as little as a pair of shoes or whether it's something that's a little bit, a little bit more drastic, like, like a, a home or a car or a, a, a certain person in your life. And then you, you get it and then you find, ah, it's not that, I want something else. You just kind of keep moving on knowing or realizing that nothing is satisfying. And so this is where this guy finds himself, realizing he needs something else. And so you, we look in verse 17, and it says, And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which ones? He's, he's like, all right, all right, which ones, Jesus? What do I need to do? And Jesus said to him, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you, sh- and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to him, all these I have kept. What do I still lack? He knows that something is still missing. He's like, I'm doing all those things. Something is still missing. And maybe you find yourself in the same place. You feel like I'm doing all the right things. Like, I'm, I'm doing all the right things, God. I'm going to church. I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to be in my scripture. I'm doing all these things. My prayer time, something just missed. Something is missing in my life. What is it? And this is where this young man finds himself. I still lack something. Now watch what Jesus says in the next verse. He says in verse 21, Jesus says, if you would be perfect. Now I want to pause there because that word perfect is really interesting. It's in the Greek, it means teleos. And what it really means is kind of like mature or whole. Or another way to say it is that you are walking in full power and potential and strength. Because, now this is a key point, because you have went through the necessary process of development to get there. So this is what Jesus is saying. Now a perfect example for it, an illustration, is actually this little guy right here. How many people know what this is? This is a telescope. All right, so what he is kind of saying is he's saying that you, to be perfect, and so he's saying that you need to go through the necessary stages. As you can see this device, this has to go through the necessary stages because right here, it's not at full power or full potential. It's just, it's a, it's, it has potential, but it's not operating in its full potential. It has the opportunity to walk in full power and authority, but it's not at that point yet. 
And so what's being said is here is there's a process going through the necessary stages to come to a point where you are walking and operating at full power and full potential. And I think a lot of us say, this is salvation. This is like, okay, this is a gift. Like salvation, you're, you're, you're saved, you're right. You have the ability to see, but you have really no, you're not walking in no power. You're not at your full potential yet. And that sometimes for me as a pastor is one of the most frustrating things about the American church is that we think salvation is the destination. We think it's the destiny. We think it stops there. Okay, I'm saved, let's move on. No, that's only the starting point. Like, that's the only starting point. because you, you, you don't have to worry about salvation or anything like that. That's a gift that's given to you. But there's so much more that you're called to go through. But are you willing to go through the necessary stages in the process to reach that full potential? So that you can walk in full power and full authority in your life. I think sometimes we, we start the process and we're like, yeah, yeah, God, okay. And, then, and God asks for that one thing in our life. We're like, nope. And we're frustrated with God. I can't really see that far. I have no power. I, I just, what is this thing? And you're looking in it the wrong way probably. And then you start the process again. You're like, oh, you made it to that one. And you, you, you're like, yeah, I got it. Yes, yes. And then and God's like, okay, let's just work on this area of your life. And you're like, all right, all right, God, I, you're in a hot worship service. You're like, I give you everything. I will never do that again. I give you everything. And then, and you're, and then you walk out of there and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And that next Friday, the friends call. Let's go to the club. Or maybe you get a call from work and... You immediately from there, you're so discouraged, you go back to the bar, you can't handle the stress of it, or you have to smoke a little bit to put yourself to sleep, and you just kind of start, you just like, ah, you just fail to go through the stages. And it's not an issue of salvation. That's not the issue. This is, this is a gift. But what are you doing with it? Like, are you going to walk in your full potential and your full power that God has given for you? Now, I would say that if we were honest with ourselves, our lack of zeal, and maybe passion, maybe that where we hit that roadblock in our life, that at the center of that is a decision to not let go of something God's called you to let go of. And it's holding you back from going through the necessary stages to reach your full potential, your full power that God is destined for you. Now, I want to be very ultra clear on something. This has nothing to do with God's love for you. Nothing. Like I said earlier, he, he showed you his love by laying down his life for you. No greater love can someone have for you than lay down his life for you. This has nothing to do with his love. But it does have everything to do with can God use you and work through you fully in full power. Because God loves you, but God will not build on an uncommitted person. He won't build it. He won't build on an uncommitted person. I want to show you a passage in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. It's just the first part of it. It says that the eyes of the Lord search. And so he's looking, guys. He's looking throughout the earth, looking for someone who's willing, who says, here I am, God. Use me. Here I am, God. Use me. And it continues on. He says he, he's searching the whole earth in order to strengthen those who are what? Who are What? Let's, let's try this again, guys. Who are what? Fully committed to him. He's looking for that person. Let 2019 be the year that you can say, that's me, God. That I, I want to give you everything that I have. I want, I, want to give, I want complete surrender to you. Everything I have, I want to give to you, God. Now, in the, back to the passage in Verse 21, it says, after he talks about being perfect, he says, this is how he tells us to do it. He says, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, 
and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. So here he is, he's telling us how to do it. So the thing is, even though the young man, the young rich ruler wanted more of God, he wanted what he had more than he wanted that. And so this is interesting. He, he didn't have possessions. His possessions had him. And in our case, maybe yours is not wealth or anything like that, but often God, we, we're like, God, I want everything that you have for me, everything that you have for me. And then we have that moment with the Lord where we're just praying. He asked for that one area, and we're saying, well, you can't have that. And that's where our growth and our process of development stops in our life because Jesus wants complete surrender. He wants complete surrender. And I think that many of us are missing out in that our development process is, has stopped because we're doing everything we can to avoid complete surrender. Let's be honest with ourselves. We do everything to avoid that one topic. We do everything to avoid that one area in our prayer life because we know that God's been nudging our hearts in that one area, and that's the one area that we're not wanting to give him, and that's the one area that's going to stop you from your next process of development and reaching your full potential. He wants complete surrender. But this is, this, is, this is honestly what I believe. I believe that everyone in here, at least most, I would say mostly everybody in here, that you really do want to just give it all to God. Like, you're like, I, I really want to give everything that I have to God. I really do want to trust and surrender. But it's so difficult, is it not? It's tough. Because there's certain areas that it's just difficult to let go of. But I think that this year is a year that you can make a decision that things are different. That you can say, you know what, God? You know what, God? Take me through whatever process you want to take me through. God, take me through whatever process you want to take me through because I want everything that you have for me. I want everything that you have for me. So take me through whatever process that it is that you want to take me through, God. I believe that that is our heart's cry, and I, I hope and I pray that you line up with that in this year. And now here is that phrase. Remember in the beginning when I was talking about the phrase that I hope kind of burns on your heart and sticks with you. I hope that you never forget. All right, here it is. I must let go in order to grow. Let's say it together. I must let go to grow. Let's try again. <laughs> Guys, I always mess up these slides. <laughs> like, I don't do good with these things. Let's try that one up there. I will not grow until I let go. Let's try it again. I even make the slide. That's the bad part about this. They don't match, though. Either way, I want that to put in your heart. I will not grow until I let go. I will not grow until I let grow. Let go. And we see this. It's a tongue twister, too. Let's try that a little bit. And we see this truth in the story with this young rich ruler. He was unwilling to let go. But what is, my question for you is, what is God asking from you? Like, what is it that he's asking of you? Like, when you, when you get alone by yourself, and you're praying, and you're seeking God, and you're, and you're with him, and, and he, he, he puts his finger on that one area. What is that area? What is that one thing? You know, for this, this young guy, it was his wealth, it was his possessions, and maybe that's not the case for you. Maybe it is, though. Maybe it is possessions and wealth. It is, it's holding you. You're so afraid of losing it. Everything that you do in your life is to gain more of it and to hold on to it. For some of you, maybe it's 
a status, like a, a social status. You're, 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 you're seeking and strive to reach a certain social status in your life. For some people, it could be the approval of others. Like you will not do anything to compromise what people think of you to a fault. Like you will not do anything that compromise what other people think of you. So maybe it's the praise of or the praise of man. Maybe it's a lifestyle of sin. Like maybe it's a promiscuous lifestyle. Like God's telling you, stop this, and you've been unwilling to do it. Maybe it's maybe it, maybe it's it's substances and drugs and alcohol. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, there's so many things it could be. It could be a relationship. God has told you to leave this relationship. It's, it's, he's never called you to it. Maybe it's the American dream in the, in the perfect family that you actually put God on hold because it's inconvenient for your plan. What? Think about that. You place God on hold. God, I will get to that when it's convenient because right now it doesn't fit into my plan. Like you tell the king of all kings, God Almighty, hold off. Just, just hold off, God. So maybe it's the American dream in this perfect little family. Maybe it's an offense. You might not realize it, but man, once you get offended, that's, that stuff is hard to let go. Is it not? It's hard to let go. When someone offends you, sometimes, I don't know what kind of personality you are. You can hold on to it for a while. Me, I kind of forget pretty fast. But some people, you hold on to it. You remember what they were wearing. You remember what their breath smelled like. You remember, what, you remember everything about them. Their shoes. You remember where it was. You remember exactly how they said it or exactly how they did it. And you hold on to it. And God is asking you to let go of that. It could be bitterness. It could be pride. It could be any of those things. I'm not, and, and just because I didn't name it doesn't mean that's it. That, that's not it. I mean, I would be here forever, just a whole long list. What is God asking from you if you want to reach your full potential? Will you go through the necessary stages in the process of development to reach your full potential? Or will you stay like this? And God will love you. He just can't use you. I guess throw you at someone. Will you go through the process? And, and, and as I said earlier, if we're honest, you know, God calls us to do something and we start off well and then all of a sudden we, ah, I don't know, God. I don't know if I can do that. Don't know if we can do that. We slowly retreat. And what's really sad, what's really sad is when there's someone who's been operating. I mean, maybe it was years ago. Maybe this is someone in this room right now. You were, this was you. Like you were walking with the Lord. You were intimate with the Lord. You were, and it's slowly over time in the wear of tear of ministry, maybe even ministry, maybe the church, and, and slowly what began to happen is you just slowly begin to decrease. Just slowly, and then something else happened and occurred, and, and you slowly just begin to decrease. The next thing you know, slowly, over time, you find yourself in a place that you never thought you would be. But the beautiful thing is that God is a God of restoration, full of grace and power, and he's willing to take your hand and hold you and walk you through every step of the process so that you can reach full Power so you can be perfect. But are you willing to let go? This is a side note. I really debate, debated on whether I wanted to share this or not. I had it in my message. I was like, I don't know. I'm going to take it out. I kept doing that over and over again. A lot of times, if I'm not sure about something, I, in my message on, on Word, you can strike through it. So it's there, but it's stricken through. And so I was debating on just striking through it debating on deleting it, debating on removing it, but I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I believe that this is for someone here in this place today. I believe maybe for more than one person here today. So in some ways, I believe this could be a prophetic for someone's life. I believe that you have been calling out, listen to me, you've been calling out for God to bless you and to give you peace in a place that he's never called you to be. 
that you, and here's another scenario, you've, you, you've, you've called out to God to bless you and give you peace in a relationship he's called you to leave. How can God bless you and give you peace in a place that he never called you to be? And I don't know who that is. But I just want to encourage you. Let go and watch what happens. Obey with him, obey him and watch what happens. Trust him and watch what happens. Guys, I really, I just want to, I want to sit in this moment. The reason being is because I think that destinies do hang in the balance. I don't believe your destiny is guaranteed to happen. Might sound strange, but if you think about it, do you really think that people were destined to grow up and their whole life just live on welfare and just, or to grow up and never make much of their life. And, no, I, I, I think there's decisions that we make that determine the trajectory of our life. You know, I had a, a coffee meeting with a guy probably, gosh, maybe three years ago. And I remember sitting in that coffee shop with him. I was just getting ready to know him. Just, just, just getting to know him and I had this unction, this, this, what I would call a word for him in that moment. And we were sitting in the coffee shop in a little table about like this, and I was looking across from him, and I said, hey, listen, this is, take it for what it's worth, but this is what I see. I see that you're at the Atlanta terminal, the Atlanta airport. You know, every flight goes into Atlanta, right? On our way to heaven, we're going through Atlanta. <laughs> I said, I see you, you landed in Atlanta. And you have an opportunity to make the decision of where you're going to go. You can make the decision to go this way, where God didn't call you. Or you can make the decision to go this way, where God has called you. The decision that was up to you. And he made the decision to go in the right direction. And I am blown away by the development, the process that he's put himself into. Has it always been easy? It has not been easy, but he's putting himself through the process to fulfill what God has called him to do. In that moment, his life was probably not all put together at all. But he was willing to follow the process. And I never shared, I never asked him if I could share this, but he actually spoke on our stage two weeks ago when we had the four speakers. Because he said, you know what? I'm willing, God, whatever you want of me, whatever you want of me, you could have it. Take me through the process. Don't let me hold on to anything that's going to keep me from reaching, what, reaching the potential that you have called me to. So I want to ask you, what is God asking you to let go of? What have you been holding on to? And it could, have been, it could have been for years you're holding on to this. And it could even be guilt and shame. That you're always telling yourself, I'm not worthy enough. I, 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 you know, you hold on to the shame. And you, you, you never step out or do anything because you allow shame in what you did in your past to keep you from your future. When God has wiped all those things clean. He says, I've called you higher. I've called you to greater things. I've called you to soar like an eagle. It's up to you guys. I cannot make the decision for you. I wish I could go and just hit buttons on all of your lives. Bing, 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 bing. The decision was made. But I can. It's your choice. Your choice. I believe even legacy will be changed by the decisions that you make. 
that your children and their children will be changed by the decisions that you make in this season. I understand some of them, it's just, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's really hard. It, it, it's holding on to you. You'll let go. Mark my words. I'm not talking about physically, but it will destroy you. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you're making it clear in each person's life the thing that you're calling them to let go of. That you're making it clear, whether it's relationships, whether it's jobs, whether it's lifestyles, whether it's, uh, whether it's a, a, a offense or bitterness or shame or fear or doubt. Whatever it is that God is calling you to let go of it. Guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Some of you guys have been walking around in the barnyard with the hens and the chickens when God has called you to soar with the eagles. And you're saying, God, my life has to be more than this. It has to be more than this. And he's saying, it is. Will you follow me through the process? Will you allow me to develop you? Will you just trust me by letting go, by complete surrender? And what's so sad is that young rich ruler walked away sad because he was aware, he was more aware of what he had than what he could have. With God. He was aware of what he had more than what he could have with God. And I even pray right now with every hand up, just put your hand up, please, right now. Every hand up. Every hand up. Every hand up. Actually, you know what? Just stand up. Everybody stand up. Every, every hand up in this place. It's just a sign of surrender. If you're saying, you know what, I want, I, I want 2019 to be a year where I give him all. I don't want to hold anything back. I know, I know, Jeremy, it's going to be difficult. I know it's going to be tough. I know at times I might retreat, but I'm making a decision. I'm going forward. No matter what, I'm getting up and I'm going forward. And this is what I pray. A oh, Holy Spirit, I pray just, just a wind of grace would fall on people. I'm not talking about mercy. I'm talking about grace, which empowers you to do the things that God has called you to. That's grace. I pray that his grace will just pour over on your life, just a wind of his grace just over your life, empowering you to accomplish the things that God has called you to do. And I pray that in this season, there, it will be clear what God has called you to do, what God has called you to grab hold of, and what God has called you to let go of. It will be clear and evident. I pray that as you begin to let go of the things that God has called you to let go of, new doors of opportunities will begin to open in your life as you begin to trust Him, as you begin to trust Him with your life. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We thank you for your sweet presence. We're going to have a worship team or a prayer team in the back corner. And if you need prayer for anything, if you need prayer, just someone to encourage you through the season as you make the decisions, let things go. Go get some prayer. If you, if you just need prayer just for something that you're dealing with, with if healing, if you, if, you, if you need the healing somewhere in your body, your leg, your knee, your back, your head, anywhere, let someone stand with you and pray for you. If you need a miracle in your life or you just want some encouragement or you just want prayer, nothing has to even be wrong. You just want prayer. Go back there. And actually, I want to stop for a second. Is there anyone here who you've never given your life to Jesus Christ? You never trusted him. You never surrendered your life to him. That's your hand. Just, if that's you, just pop your hand up. That's all. 
I don't ever want to skip that opportunity. But if you do, there's someone back there that wants to pray with you. All right, guys, let's join us in this last song. And I pray that during this song, that whatever that is in your life that you've been holding on to, that you will make the decision to just surrender it to God. God, I commit this to you. It's going to be tough, but I commit this area to you. In Jesus' name.